most people say I'm funny, you know, I don't really try to be, you know, I just just say the real thing at all times, you know. That's one thing my mom told me is never to be fake around anybody. So, you know, I guess people take that as, you know, me being funny, but I mean, I don't think I am. I have four brothers and three sisters. My little sister, she plays softball. You know, she's as good as I am in football and softball. So, you know, she's coming up. If you ever see me scoring a game and I go like this, you know, that's mainly the time. That's, that's, that's like a sign for, for me and my sister because we started doing that. You know, when I was in high school, I would score a bucket for her or a basket. And then I you know, walk to the sideline and, and she'd see me and she'd do the exact same thing. So, you know, when I do that, that's like a sign, a gesture to my family. Like, you know, this is for us. Well, I used to play the drums. and I mean, I, I know how to play the flute. Uh, but I don't really play it, you know, often like I used to. I play the flute in like junior high because like everybody in our class played it. So, you know, um, I just decided to play it. And as far as the drums, I used to play drums in church. I had my ears pierced ever since I was a, a baby. You know, um, I was iced out <laughs> from the time I can remember. So I mean, when you was really young, you have different. You know, you got the the stars, then you got like the, the box ones, then you got the little money sign ones. That's you know, that was that was all in high school. You know, stuff like that. But you know, I'm I'm. Grown now, you know, so I keep it professional. Just stay with one thing. What dorm? Keel, the best dorm in the, in the land. What's the mascot of Keel? Huh? Like a kangaroo, like a kangaroo. So say you started your own team, right? Mm -hmm. What what would you what would the Sierra Wood mascot be? The Sierra Wood mascot, it would be like like a king or like a like a pharaoh or something like that. Like you know, really some some high power, you know. So you know, he probably have like a. a, a like a little advisor with a fanny pack, you know what I mean, just, just swagged out. <laughs> I can sing very, very well, and I mean, you know I mean, my teammates, they hear me sing all the time because I just, you know, I, I, I just like to sing. I was on the bus and I, was, I had my headphones on and I was singing, and I, I had my head down and everybody was like, when I looked up, everybody was looking at me, and I took my headphones off, I was like, keep going, like, keep going. I was like, all right. My favorite song would have to be Maxwell, Pretty Wings. I'll kill it. Can you give me, can you give me a couple? <clears throat> I will, but my, my throat is dry, you know, I have to warm up my vocals and stuff. I don't want to like, break the lens and stuff, so you know, I'm going to have to keep it private for right now. Maybe you'll hear me one day. You ever sing to Coach Kelly? No, nah, I don't sing to Coach Kelly. <laughs> what song would you sing to Coach Kelly? Uh, I don't know, I'd probably like, sing like Sweet Home Alabama or something like that. <laughs> Sierra Wood, student, athlete, Irish. player uh, injured down in the field. It's number 52 Braxton Cave. Mike Golick Jr. is the backup center. Uh, and a doting father watching from the sidelines. Mike Golick, former player at Notre Dame and Philadelphia Eagles, all pro. First snap's always the hardest. See how they handle it here. When, when Mike went in, you know, my first thought is, Tommy, get over here and take time. He goes, Coach, I'm fine. We take snaps all the time. I know exactly where his ball is. I feel great. Don't worry about it. And that's, I feel good about that when you know that those guys are working. Uh, it's just kind of always a point of emphasis around here, like I said, next man in. So taking the mental reps when you're not in during practice and just really focusing on your assignment and doing the film study and everything off the field that everyone else is doing to get ready for the game and just always being ready when that opportunity presents itself. I mean, you get very few chances like that to go in and, and do what you have to do. So just being ready for that opportunity and making the most of it. I think it was his first snap, if not one of his first snaps, where he, he has to throw the key block, mm -hmm. and he just dominated his guy. His guy was pretty good. Yeah, oh, uh, the, the number 50 for Wake Forest, uh, he, he just, he's a nightmare. That kid is not blockable. He's, well, he's not going to stay blocked very long. The game is on the line, on the road, and uh, you got to grow up quickly. And he got a chance to go in there, and uh, you know, I'm sure he's going to look at this game and go, all right, where, where can I move to the next level? You know, there's a lot of things he can do better, but Boy, he came in there in a tough situation and uh, snapped the ball well. Um, you know, really was assignment conscious in terms of what he was doing. Um, and now that, you know, when he's ready uh, to get back in the game again, he'll be better for it. What are your thoughts on your first career start? Looking forward to it. Obviously, you know, feel terrible for Braxton, very good friend of mine, my roommate, one of my best friends. But like Coach Kelly always says, next man in, time to step up, and uh, it's something I've been looking for for a while. So. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, just getting used to that level of conditioning is going to be uh, one thing, but that's why we do all the work in the off season and everything, and that's why, you know, you take the reps out there now and just stay ready. So I'm just looking forward to it. I know the other guys out there that have, you know, been out there for the rest of the season will, you know, help me out and get me into the flow of things, but I'm ready to go out there and do my thing. This is something I've prepared for for a long time, so I think I'm very ready for it. Braxton. Mike Golick rotated in there with the first unit every day. Braxton took the majority of the first team reps, but I had Golick rotating in there, and Mike's 
a very integral part of the unit. They hang out together, those guys. Uh, Mike's smart, he knows what he's doing. So he's had plenty of work in practice with the first unit to where those guys know who he is, they know what to expect out of him, they, they, they appreciate what he can do. And uh, so not, not much will change. You talked a little about, about Mike Golick and the snaps and how yeah. key that is. But when, when you found him, I mean, did you find him to be athletically a good fit for the spread? You know, it's an interesting question. I think, you know, what we liked right away was how easy it was for him to snap the ball. Because believe me, you, you can find yourself out of that position if you don't have that skill and the ability to do that. And I've had some centers that look great, are athletic, but just couldn't snap the ball. So that was, that was a positive force. The center position is a little bit different relative to athleticism in the sense that it's really about your ability to stay on your feet. And so you have to have a great base. He's athletic. Braxton has a, a, a more developed base. You can't knock Braxton Cave off his base. If, if, if you, and I know this sounds like a crazy analogy, but you know, think of two sumo wrestlers. I mean, the center position, those guys have to stay on their feet. Mike is getting better at that. He's getting stronger. Um, but he's a BCS football player, so he's athletic enough that he can do those things. He has to continue to develop his strength, and he has. He is so far ahead of where he was last year, and now he's a starter for us. Uh, it's been a process, and everything really hasn't gone according to plan, you know, as, as I got kind of envisioned it coming in. But it was a process of, like you said, getting a little bit bigger and getting acclimated to the speed and uh, everything about the college game and just sort of waiting for my opportunity. And obviously it, it took a lot longer than, than I planned on originally, but just kind of, you know, through my own little support system, my family and the guys around me, just, just keeping the faith and knowing that there's a time and a place for everything and just being ready when called upon. What attributes as a player does he bring to the field? Intensity, uh, very intense, very smart, uh, very uh, competitive, quick. He has quickness to him, um, loves to play. You know, he, he's almost a, a throwback player. He's an old fashioned type of guy, you know, in terms of isn't afraid to get dirty, isn't afraid, scratch this, nose bleeding, you know, skin his knee, I mean, dirt all over his face. He doesn't care about any of that. He's He's a true lineman and just loves to play football, and so that's, a, that's refreshing. We are, you know, mentally preparing ourselves uh, to go in to, uh, you know, play on the road again, and all that goes with that. Uh, I think we saw last week, uh, you know, you've got to really play well uh, when you go on the road. Teams are going to play their very best. Maryland will play their very best against us, as has every team we've gone against. They've played their absolute best game of the year. And maybe you don't get that, but I get that from the coaches after the game. And uh, so, again, we're going to be confronted with a similar situation. You know, everybody looks at Maryland's record uh, and, and uh, asks about them. I can tell you this, from watching film and studying them, uh, offensively, they can put some points on the board. You know, just look at the West Virginia game, the Miami game, Clemson game. Uh, they have skilled players. Um, two quarterbacks that, um, you know, can do a lot of great things for them, throwing it and running it. And defensively, they've got some athletes. You know, certainly you've got new coordinators. It's the first year for Randy Etzel. I know Randy Etzel. He's a darn good football coach. And uh, he'll have uh, the memories of coming in here at Notre Dame and beating Notre Dame and playing physical. That's, that's what his teams will do. And, and um, so we have to be prepared and worry about ourselves. Maryland has, has uh, talented wide receivers, talented backs, talented tight end, big physical offensive line, uh, one of the better offensive lines that we've seen um, so far. Uh, try to try to bring it bring the eval honestly each week. Um, this is this is an outstanding offensive line. Um, they they have a multi um, uh, one two punch at quarterback uh, with a with a with a real real runner fast. Um, not a flashy runner, but but can really gas it. Uh, and, and, a, and, a, and an excellent passer um, who a year ago I believe was ACC freshman of the year or an ACC player uh, you know t you know 2,500 yards and uh, you know 20 something touchdowns and not many interceptions so I'm um, very accomplished player um, so offensively uh, it'll, it's going to be a huge challenge for our defense <laughs> you know it's it's going to be a difficult cha challenge they've got two quarterbacks that that play different styles and, and they have a talented receiving core so you know we're we're 
it's going to be a challenge for us. And you know, you know what our numbers are. We're not, we're not very deep there. You know, we, we go really inexperienced after the first four guys, you know, other than Jamoris at the nickel position. So, um, yeah, we're concerned. You know, we, we know we have to play really well against a team that can throw four and five receivers at you. They have uh, multiple fronts and blitz packages, and uh, they've used a lot of different guys, so you're not really sure when a guy goes in the game, what's his purpose? Is he coming in the game because he's a blitz specialist or a cover specialist? So uh, they've, you know, we're, we're trying to you know, get our hands around that. Uh, we've watched every game that they've played this year, and uh, there's been a lot of guys in and out. I think the biggest challenge that, they, that we have really is this is a good football team. They've played a number of really good football teams very close, and I think if, this is the kind of team, if you let them hang around, they're going to they're gonna play you right till the end. Uh, I think they're very aggressive, and they take, they, they're very, very aggressive, and they'll take chances uh, all over the place in the back end. They'll go after the ball. Uh, they'll attack the football. And also, their, their guys are really, really uh, well-schooled and doing all the things that defensive coaches teach as far as trying to strip the ball and knock it out. But when I see them, I see, you know, a dangerous team because they have the capabilities with the talent they have of being pretty good. So, you know, we're going to focus more on us, though. That's been our mantra here is focus on Notre Dame. What do we got to do? Prepare the process of during the week, the diligence it takes to get ready, and then uh, go compete.